hope that you had a great 4th of July that you got to celebrate with your family and friends. Maybe you had a cookout, uh, them hamburgers and hot dogs on the grill. Me and Dad went up to uh, Famous Recipe Chicken. I love that place up in Maryville, Tennessee. So that's where we celebrated the 4th of July at. And I don't know if you can hear it uh, as I'm recording this, but there's some people outside in my neighborhood still celebrating the 4th right now. So anyway, our scripture reading today is going to be taken out of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 14. And we're going to look here at a story. Well, a couple days ago, I guess it was Monday's broadcast, uh, we were talking about keeping our eyes focused on Jesus. And today we're going to take a look at a real-life example of somebody that had his eyes focused on Jesus and then took his eyes off of Jesus, and we're going to see what happened. Of course, we're talking about the Apostle Peter. And Matthew chapter 14, verses 22... Let's go down through verse 31. Verses 22 and 23 are strictly going to be for background purposes here. But he says, In straight way, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him onto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. The multitudes are referring to here. Uh, Jesus just fed the 5,000 at that point. And he was sending them on their way. Verse 23 says, And when he had sent the multitude away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And when evening, evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. So there was Jesus up on the mountain. He was taking time to pray, like Jesus did a lot, if you look in the Gospels. And I think that's one of the issues we have today is we don't take the time to pray and to seek God like Jesus did. That's a whole other subject. I'm not going to go down there. But now as Jesus, Jesus is looking out from the mountain, he sees the ship in the midst of the sea. It was getting tossed with waves. There was undoubtedly a storm out there. The winds were contrary to it. It was making it rock. It was making it feel like they were going to sink. And verse 25 says, in the first watch of the night, in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went on to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out in fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. Beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Awesome story of scripture really tells us a lot about the way that we walk with Jesus, the way that we're living our life in Jesus. And the disciples are out there, the wind's blowing, the storm's most likely raging, waves are, are bashing into the ship, and it's, it's a struggle for them to control the ship. And pretty soon they see a figure of somebody coming. They're in the middle of the sea. Why would somebody be coming in the middle of the sea? And they, they got scared. They thought it was a spirit. Most of us would have got scared. I've spent, let's see, 28 days at sea, 27 days at sea, something like that. No, 30 days at sea. I don't know. Seven, it don't matter. Anyway, I spend numerous days at sea, and, and when it's dark outside and you're sitting on your balcony, you can't see more than a couple of feet outside the ship. Because with the lights of the ship, the rest is utter darkness. I mean, you've never seen darkness like you see out in the middle of the ocean. And it's at a point like that that you really got to have faith in your captain and have faith in your vessel that nothing's going to happen to you. But the disciples in the darkness see the spirit coming and they got scared. But Jesus said to them, be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And Peter, I've said numerous times, Peter is, is my favorite disciple. And, you know, a lot of times Peter just speaks his mind. And 
sometimes that's what I have a tendency to do is I just speak my mind without really thinking about what's going to come out and that's what I think Peter did here Jesus said be of good cheer it is I and verse 28 says and Peter answered him and said Lord if it be thou bid me to come unto thee on the water what was Peter thinking but it was a challenge to see if it was really Jesus or not or if they were seeing a ghost or if they were seeing something that wasn't true and Jesus said unto him come and Peter climbed down out of the boat and verse 29 says he walked on the water to go to Jesus he walked on the water the other 11 cowards stayed in the boat but Peter got out and Peter walked on water now I don't know how far he went I would assume he went a distance from the ship I could be wrong but scripture says here now in verse number 30 and when he saw the wind boisterous he was afraid when he saw the wind he undoubtedly felt the the sea spray of the waves and he looked around him and he saw the angry sea and what happened verse 30 is where we are and he was afraid and beginning to sink he cried saying Lord save me at that moment when he started looking at the waves is when he took his eyes off of Jesus at that moment when he started being concerned about his surroundings he took his eyes off of Jesus you see that's where you and I get into trouble my friends when we start going through times of trouble when when the cares of this world start piling up when things start not happening the way we want them to happen all of a sudden we take our eyes off of Jesus and that's when problems come in for Peter he began to sink into the ocean because he took his eyes off of Jesus it wasn't because Jesus wasn't strong enough to be able to have Peter come walking to him on water no the problem was with Peter and his lack of faith that he was going to be able to get to Jesus yes the wind was blowing yes the waves were angry yes the sea was 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 being tossed and yes if he would have kept his eyes focused on Jesus he would have went to Jesus right out there in the middle of the ocean but because he took his eyes off of Jesus he sank and that's what happens to each one of us when we take our eyes off of Jesus we sink we can't live the Christian life we can't do what God's called us to do if we try and do it on our own power we need to keep focused on Jesus we need to keep focused on him no matter what go, what's going on in life no matter how our, our life is in a crazy whatever right now we need to keep our eyes focused on Jesus and as Peter sank he cried out Lord save me and verse 31 says and immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him O you of little faith wherefore didst thou doubt O you of little faith those are words that I hope I never hear from Jesus O oh, you of little faith imagine what Jesus can do in your life in my life if we learn to keep focused on him instead of focusing on what's going on around us a few weeks ago we were reading about Elijah Elisha in a cave Elijah in a cave because he was threatened by a woman and God spoke to him and there was the earthquake there was the fire there was the strong winds and then there was that still small voice and Elijah recognized that still small voice we need to keep focused on Jesus whether the seas are raging whether the winds are raging whether the earth is going through an earthquake whether the fires are burning everything around us we need to keep focused on Jesus if we want to live the life he has called us to live think about that as you go through this day and remember get into God's Word and allow God's Word to get into you then share that word with someone today have a blessed day